All right, we are live. What's up, everybody? Dead Man Dreams channel here. Hey, I am what's Brian. up? I am Brian from Dead Man Dreams channel. Uh, Mr. Tesla himself, the, uh, uh, I don't even know what to call you, the Tesla expert man, Marco himself from the Marco, <laughs> talk about your channel, okay, Mar uh, Musings by Marco channel, right? That's correct. All right, cool. I wanted to make sure I got it right. <laughs> But, all right, guys, this is a serious one. We weren't really planning on doing this in advance, but uh, Russia is making serious moves right now on uh, Ukraine. At first, it looked like they may have been bl uh, possibly bluffing just to get more uh, you know, of their demands met from the West because uh, they only invaded, well, not even invaded in a sense. They were welcomed in by two separatist regions in the eastern part of Ukraine. Uh, now, Marco has some breaking news for you. This is, uh, it's been breaking literally within the past 10, 15 minutes. So yeah, uh, full-scale invasion has been happening and uh, hit it up. Has there been uh, cyber uh, attacks yeah, too? Yeah, it's going down right now. Yeah, uh, it was funny that uh, you brought up the idea of uh, talking tonight because uh, <coughs> this is all happening right now. Russia the most important is moving into time. Ukraine, and I'm going to lay yeah. out uh, uh, historical uh, perspectives on this, like uh, from World War One, World War Two, how fast things can escalate from here, how China may see this as an opportunity as resources are tied up uh, in order to invade Taiwan. We're going to get into all that tonight. So, all right, sorry to interrupt. Go for it. And this is the phone that the replica <laughs> of the phone that the president of Ukraine uses. Hello? With Biden. Mr. President? <laughs> Biden? We're fucked. Hello? We need help. <laughs> Russia's fucking invading. Your sanctions suck dick. They do nothing. God damn you. That's like a Doctor do Strange. Something. That's like a, do something. a hybrid Doctor Strange love line mixed with the Simpsons. The goggles do nothing. The Arnold character mixed with the Doctor Strange love. But alright, let's get serious. Like this is literally worse than the Cold War uh before, like we all have so many countries have nuclear weapons now, so uh, this is potentially I mean, world so ending. So far, it's um, oh, yeah. you know, so far it's just military targets. It looks like um, uh, they could be. Uh, it looks like they could be pretty precise here with uh, modern weaponry, but uh, it does kind of look like Russia's military is on another level compared to Ukraine, of course. Oh, they are, and they, they might have just wiped them out uh, with missiles. All their kind of major infrastructure there's some reports <coughs> that uh they wiped out their like uh, uh airfields defense uh, military bases you know who, um, you know what's similar israel did that uh in the middle east back when egypt was an enemy instead of this broker of peace in the region uh i forget what year it was but it was like in the earlier uh 1900s uh maybe 1930s or 40s whatever it was but israel knocked out all the airfields of uh, Egypt and all the uh, surrounding Muslim nations, they did it real quick, real fast. And so they were lacking the uh, aircraft because aircrafts are the dominant weaponry in this world right now, drones and aircrafts. So it, all right, here's, a, here's just sense. a little couple things that uh, I'm getting right here. I got a good source here is, uh, doing a lot of, uh, of kind of breaking what news. What news source? Or um, Twitter? Yeah, this is from Twitter. Here's some of these tweets I'm seeing here. Uh, breaking, Belarusian soldiers have joined Russian troops in attacking Ukraine. Um, if you pull up a map, you'll see that uh, Belarus is uh, on the northern border of Ukraine. Yeah, um, allied with Russia from the beginning, yeah. Yeah, Russia said military infrastructure, air defense facilities, military airfields, and aviation <coughs> of the Ukrainian army have been disabled by high-precision weapons. Jeez. Uh, Zelensky, the Ukraine president, says, "Don't panic, my <laughs> friends. Don't worry. Don't panic." That's uh, kind of like uh, what did uh, it was Saddam or someone in in Iraq when they were the invasion was happening to them. This guy came out. I was like, "Don't panic. We'll be fine." You know. It reminds me of Bob later, Martin. Week later, Saddam Saddam was hanging in his. Uh, there's a video of him hanging. Oh, uh, even know, worse, dead. they were shoving some crap up his uh, booty hole as well. Like. Uh, it's hard to be grim, but it happened. <laughs> there's a video of it. But, uh, 
Let's yeah, see. it reminds Russian me of the, Ruble, the Bob Marley song. Don't worry, be happy. No, <laughs> that wasn't actually Bob Marley, but the uh, right. Three Little Birds. Uh, yeah, I that yeah, that one. Russian ruble has hit record low versus dollars. Yeah, the um, all the uh, U.S. markets, the futures are all really blood red. Um, mm. I actually sold a good amount of stock today. Uh, now mm. I'm really happy I did because <laughs> I was figuring uh, I would buy it lower later, and uh, I just wanted to. Uh, I should have done it over a month ago, but better late than never. After the by the way, I'd like to announce margin. after our last podcast, I did a large Tesla purchase. Uh, relative my relative to my wealth large uh tesla purchase so, what percentage uh went into tesla uh, out of the total uh, about five? 40 percent no? i think of every, oh that's pretty decent uh, yeah because nice. but also I, I have a really good friend who uh you know they they run this uh financial organization and yeah. you know they say you never want to go all in no matter how good things are looking at the time for any stock whatsoever there's anything could happen that could make that go, you know, down the toilet. And so it's a big risk, no matter how good it's looking. And so I kept that in mind. And uh, the majority of my uh, savings and investments are uh, definitely very diversified. I got crypto as well. And so uh, I'm diversified overall. But Tesla, as far as any single thing goes, that's my biggest one. So yeah, and also not, wisdom. Not, I'm not, not advice. I'm all Tesla. <laughs> not advice. This is just my personal opinion. Consult a financial expert for legal purposes. And same yep. from his mouth. Sued. We'll get sued as soon as this goes live, I'm sure. <laughs> not yet, but who knows? Maybe in the future. Who knows? I followed your uh, I followed your advice from t 10 years ago, and it told me to buy. And I did. <laughs> I lost money, you piece of shit. Exactly. Uh, people, uh, you know, go look at... You know, it, it may or may not be a good case, but Kyle Rittenhouse, the guy, the shooter from Kenosha, he's suing LeBron James for defamation because LeBron James painted him out to be a racist uh, murderer of black people and all this stuff. And uh, yeah, we could sue over almost anything in this country. It's very Rittenhouse ridiculous. has a chance of getting rich yeah. off of that, so I, I don't blame him whatsoever. But all right, let's get back yeah. to the topic. Russell. Anyway, so yeah, so the U.S. markets are down. Um, and uh, the Russian ruble, Russian market's down even more. So this is saying the Russian ruble has hit a record low versus the dollar. Um, the, yeah, Putin's kind of popular with his people, but yeah. uh, that could change if um, it starts hitting their pocketbooks and uh, they have high inflation over there. Let's talk it's, about Putin for a second, because you know Lex Friedman, he's a good guy, great friend of uh, Joe Rogan's. He started his own podcast. We we both listen to him. And he says his greatest goal would be to get an interview with uh, Putin, and because uh, he uh, was born in Russia, and uh, so th there's a lot of uh, support for Putin despite him being such a, a tyrannical jerk in, in some ways too. Like he uh, would, what he I don't know. Do he have journalists killed or you think that's weird? Them or the other? What thing, do you think about that? Why do you think that is? Well, he did that to journalists. Also, his political main. Yeah, but opponent. why do you think that he's popular still? Well, hang on, I'm almost why done you... with the the bad part. Well, let's first. have a back and forth. Here. I'm curious. I, like I, the know, last thing I was just... going to say though is, he uh, has his uh, main political opponent in jail right now for opposing him, and so the reasons I think he's popular is because he has this strong man uh, type of thing going for him. Uh, he was a top KGB guy. Uh, the Russians, if you look back in history, you, you see all these Russian spy movies out there, and I never understood what, what's up with all these Russian spy movies and all these Russian spy stuff. It's because they're the greatest spies on the planet. If you look back to World War II, the uh, Russians were scared that the Japanese... That's very subjective. <laughs> like, there's no there's... metric for greatest. Like, what's greatest? The most secretive, the most thorough. The Listen Those to this. Those are all vague. Yeah. In, in World War II, the Russians were getting invaded. On, it's the Eastern Front. The Nazis were invading them, and they had a, a ton of their like superb troops guarding the the far east in the event that the Japanese would invade. And because their spies were so good, they had such confidence that they knew what the Japanese were doing that they 
were able to ignore their entire eastern half of their country. They had a whole army of like fresh troops coming in and they were able to take on the Nazis after the other guys had been battling for months and months or even years or whatever it was. And so they that was a big part of the reason why the Russians were able to win the Battle of uh, Stalingrad and turn the tide in uh, World War II. And after the uh, Battle of uh, Stalingrad, Hitler was never the same. He was this quiet, like, detached, like, loser yeah, character. Yeah, they also threw, like, ten times the amount of troops. <laughs> Russia's, like, were just throwing bodies at them. They had more bodies. Yeah, 27 million dead is the best estimate I, I've heard of uh, Russian casualties uh, alone. Did you play? You played those uh, Call of Duty games, oh, right? Yeah. It was like Second World War Two. I love and, it. And uh, you had uh, you were playing through this one part where uh, you were a Russian <coughs> soldier fighting the Germans. Yeah, that's the Battle like, of Stalingrad. Only, yeah, I know. And uh, every third soldier got a rifle. Oh no, no, and everyone that wasn't else Stalingrad. got nothing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, and it was I like, it's fine, one. just go forward. And if once someone dies, they'll drop their rifle and you could pick it up. And exactly. Keep yeah, I, yeah, that wasn't the Battle of Stalingrad. The Stalingrad one starts you up in, a, I think you were in like the second or third story of this like messed up building that was bombed already. And, uh, but yeah, I remember, I remember that one as well. Yeah. I'm getting reports here. Even uh, attacks are going on in the western Ukraine near the border with Poland. Holy crap. You know, a bunch of troops, mm -hmm. including the U.S., are in uh, some of these Eastern uh, Eastern Europe uh, countries. But let's pray that... Yeah, not Ukraine, though. Yeah, exactly. We can't be having no direct confrontations with nuclear superpowers these days. It's messed up. Like, I No, don't... I don't think that's... Uh, you know, it's always possible, but uh, that's what I call a, a tail-end risk. It's, like, very unlikely... And it really shouldn't happen unless there's some kind of horrible accident. Yeah, um, the the one that happened most recently no was one between wants that. I think it was uh, was it India and China. They were having uh, border conflicts where they were killing a few of each other's uh, not a few even more than a few uh, of each other's uh, troops. They're uh, both nuclear superpowers now, and uh, you know. Remember, we're in the long peace. Ever since nukes were invented, we haven't had direct yep. conf uh, confrontations on a massive scale between uh, large superpowers that are armed with nukes. So Let me catch us up to current really right, quick, ahead, and then we can just talk about whatever. That way, as <coughs> new stuff comes in, we'll be uh, up to date. Yeah, go for it. So uh, Ukraine military is bragging a bit, saying their air defense shot down a, a Russian plane in eastern Ukraine. Belgium is saying this is the darkest hour since World War II. It is. President of Belarus has reportedly given orders to his army to integrate with the Russian army in their invasion of Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine's military also saying again they got five enemy planes and a helicopter. Um, da, 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 Luhansk, which was claimed by Putin three days ago, announced his military operation to seize other areas it claims in eastern Ukraine. <laughs> okay. Hmm. This is just the pretext, uh, expanding all the time. Ukraine's border control <coughs> confirms Russian attacks from Belarus, Crimea, Luhansk, Sumy, Kharkiv, Chernyiv, and Zitomir. That's seven points, all pointing to Kiev. And, and this is also in addition to what we saw in uh, Western Ukraine. This is all you're totally surrounded at this point. But the good news is they is... shot in missiles to take out everything ahead of time too. <clears throat> they don't. But they're wanna... probably just mostly rolling in at this point. Yeah, un unopposed. They don't want to destroy know? Ukraine because they want that. The they want all. Yeah, that themselves. would cost them if they take it over. Exactly. Yeah, they want to they... probably take out the Ukrainian government and install their own government and just cripple the same military. way the Chinese. Remember in Hong Kong. They, Hong Kong is such an important uh, uh, economic superpower for the Chinese uh, government if they would completely take it over. And so they didn't want to, you know, be bombing the streets of Hong Kong. You do it through espionage. You do it through, uh, you know, this virus was the greatest thing that ever happened to the Chinese. Like, they squashed it in their country. Then as the, the virus um, stopped the protests in the streets of Hong Kong, and then... The Chinese had the time to go after and research and uh, go after the uh, China, uh, the uh, Hong Kong leaders who were pro-West, pro-America, and 
disappeared them and there's all these videos of the uh, families of the, uh, the the leaders where they're pounding on the sides of the bus as the chinese uh, take them away it's messed up like the chinese yeah. and the russians are they got this tyrannical Let's stuff see. so eu I mean, is calling on russia to withdraw its military from ukraine imposing further stronger sanctions i believe that's not going to do anything at this point oh by the way <laughs> about the sanctions the the uh, germany one was big uh germany was on the fence for a while on whether or not to uh, continue with this plan for this new pipeline this oil pipeline russia is one of the biggest oil producers uh, there are in the world and uh now germany has put the the plan yeah that should hurt a pause. little bit oh Didn't yeah stop them though yeah <laughs> i mean but that was a big one much. Uh, so the West Ukraine is Ukraine ministry. Yeah, cyber attacks are ongoing nonstop. Uh, <coughs> from the Russian military, Ukrainian air defense has been degraded. Ukraine has denied this. <laughs> what about uh, this? Could it... be like in the information age right now when things are spreading so fast. Yeah, you can depending on what story is out there, you could possibly demoralize. The Ukrainian troops. Yeah. If they are convinced that they have no, that, you know, they can't fight <laughs> and it's like, it's like game over from the first minute, they're yeah. not going to put out, they might lay down their arms and just give up. So that's huge from the Russian point of view. They could, if they want to do a full invasion, they could uh, take it with a lot less uh, damage and casualties. You know what that reminds me of? If they convince that, uh, yeah, Ukrainians that, hey, it's <laughs> pointless. You guys have no air defense already. You're, you're naked, you know, just <laughs> give up. Yeah. Well, they've tried that before. Uh, I think it was in, uh, uh, it might have been in the World War II Pacific. The The Japanese would be uh, sending out messages like that over a megaphone saying, you have already surrendered. No need to give up your life. <laughs> <laughs> and like all this stuff, like it's just like designed to get the guys to drop their guns and <laughs> pull their hands up and get captured. The but, American president is fat and lazy and stupid. <laughs> he has given up. He has surrendered America. You are all our property. But, <laughs> like, what is this accent that we're using this is the foreigner <laughs> accent <laughs> if we're all nations this is appropriate but by the way do you ever hear the story ja japanese would be like ah ha. So, ah. the uh, japanese uh, though uh, I was you are surrendered say. you should you lose now you're <laughs> lost surrender now your forces will all perish <laughs> i was going to say though about the japanese they're they're the most hardcore like mentally like out of anyone in the world in world war ii uh after uh, you know there's all yeah, these dude. these islands suicide bombers you got no nope. pretty hard car to be well well to, yeah like, yeah suicide bombers but also they would stab themselves to death over disgrace like the top generals and stuff they would uh, oh, yeah, stab themselves in the gut and rip their guts out and kill themselves but the the other things though is uh, uh what was it? oh yeah basically after the war was over the Japanese people who were like these soldiers who were on these islands, they had no confirmation from an official source that it was over. And so they were continuing to act like the war was on for like 10 years or even more than 10 years after the war uh, was over. And uh, this one guy who got the orders to defend a certain area, he would not stop defending this area until his uh, former uh, higher ranking official guy, I forget what his rank was, he actually had to go like 10 years later or more to back to meet this guy and say, yo, it's over. The war is over. Yeah. Relax already. And then only then he would, uh, you know, let, go, uh, let his uh, guard down. So, and also the Japanese used to, uh, I forget. I forget if I uh, yep. mentioned this uh, real quick uh, in the previous one, but uh, they would actually have their trainees, like the military trainee types, uh, bayonet living Chinese. Uh, what would it be called? Uh, Assholes. <laughs> no, like uh, hostages or uh, detainees. Uh, so, yeah, like they would have real humans where the Japanese would bayonet real living humans to death in their training. That's how crazy they they were. And, you know, you could see this in the Japanese animation these days. They go more hardcore in the violence and the heart-wrenching <laughs> content than any other type of film on the planet. Like the Japanese, they're just extreme. I love the Japanese. Like I, I think a lot of what they do is beautiful and it's amazing. I love anime myself, so, as you do, but... All right. Any new updates? 
Yeah, the crazy work culture too. <coughs> That's like uh Oh yeah. They don't want to go home until their boss is done. So it's kinda like that. Yeah, it's, it's all like, about oh, honor. My boss my boss didn't go home, so I gotta stay here and keep playing the war. You know, uh, let's see, according to Ukrainian military, Russia is moving equipment across Crimea and restricting ships in the Azov Sea. That must be that big uh sea that they border. Hmm. Two Ukrainian villages have been seized in the Luhansk. Russian ruble continues to plummet. Almost caught up here. There's only one more thing. Uh, crypto markets have seen big liquidations. A lot of crypto selling off because that's open right now. Hmm. There was actually some ideas that uh, Russia might be buying Bitcoin because hmm. uh, someone was monitoring Bitcoin. There's like someone is buying uh, two millions <coughs> worth of Bitcoin like every five minutes, like clockwork. And he was saying that it could be Russia and they're preparing themselves to get around um, U.S. sanctions by basically not having to go through the U.S. dollar. By the way, even years ago, uh, a friend of mine went to Russia uh, for a vacation and he said that the uh, currency over there was so cheap. It was ridiculous. And, you know, I was doing the Forex trading for some years. Nobody even bothers to trade Russian currency. Like, it's like not even like that valuable or meaningful to you know even trade but it was so uh when he my friend was there he said that there was a, a different price for tourists versus the locals because everything was so absolutely dirt cheap for any tourists coming in with foreign currency because of how low their currency was worth that well, i would hate that i'd have to try to pass as a local <laughs> yeah, it, it, but I mean, it, even then mute. it was cheap. Even with the uh, foreign prices, it was cheap. Like, so I could see why they were doing it. So that'll be a fun uh, t t test if you're there. Like, see if you can pass as a Russian. Just like <laughs> to try to dress yourself up. Maybe if you don't talk and just like grunt. Like, mm -hmm. I might be able to pull stuff. it off. I, I'm like mostly Polish. And I, yeah. You know, hey, I, I pulled it off in uh, in uh, Los Angeles. There was this Eastern European supermarket that I went to, and like uh, the lady at the cash register just started talking to me in some Eastern European language I couldn't even understand because I look, yeah. I, I played the part, I, I got the right skin, I guess, or whatever, and I was like, no, I only know English, and uh, it was an interesting experience. Like, they did you all... find out what it was, what language it was? No, uh, I can only guess. It just assumes that, like, you know it. Yeah, because she was doing that with every single person in line because all the people there <laughs> in that neighborhood, yeah. Oh, okay. It, it wasn't even that neighborhood. Like, for yeah. everybody would – it was a diverse neighborhood still, but it was just all the Eastern Europeans from that neighborhood and all the surrounding ones in L.A. would go to that uh, store. So, Breaking martial law has been declared in Ukraine. What? Martial law. Government is that's messed up. Does that mean the military is kind of in control? Yeah, and your rights are law? suspended, and everything's yeah. up in the air, and everything's in hell. That people have been scared of that happening in the USA for a long time. Yeah, we all know that's that from a horrible that thing. Sh shitty Bruce Willis movie where they declare martial law in the U.S. <laughs> Which and movie then, was uh, that? Uh, no, but it was a <laughs> shitty Bruce Willis movie, and it had. Um, I think it had um, Antonio Banderas in it. Oh no, no, it was um, who's um, <coughs> that uh, the hot black guy? Um, <laughs> the hot one. Yeah. Oh, the Denzel. <laughs> Denzel. Yeah. <laughs> See. <laughs> See. Yeah. All right, I get it. <laughs> well, I only know he that because I saw he was on the list of the hottest. <laughs> uh, hot. Yeah, the hottest uh, male actors. Uh, all right, this podcast is taking a weird turn. <laughs> all right, let's get As back usual. to it. Oh, it's called The Siege. came out in 98. Had Tony Shalhoub in there, uh, Denzel, Bruce Willis. There was terrorist attack, and then they so in New York, and they declared martial <coughs> law. I was going to say, I got a bunch of topics here. This one uh, fits right now. Uh, I, I really hope this doesn't turn into like a, a long term Ooh, war. Even airports are getting targeted. Oh, this is God. a report of a cruise missile impact against the Ivano Frankivsk airport in western Ukraine. It says most airports and air bases have been targeted, it seems like, in Ukraine. Makes sense. 
Like, if you want to take over a country, uh, you got to shut down all the airports <laughs> and you got to lock down all the uh, movement, uh, basically in and out of yeah. the country or state and also in between it. So you take over all the highways, you take over all the airports, and then everything is like frozen. Then yeah. you can kind of control everything. Everyone's just stuck in place and you could just corral off whoever you want and uh, you can fortify whatever you want and... Yeah, once you can't move, you're you're dead. Yeah, I, I got. Uh, I really hope uh, we can avoid long-term war. Hopefully, this remains a regional conflict. But I have a story here from uh, World War Two. Seems II. like it's going fast. <laughs> it seems Ooh. seems like it's going. I mean, you could have maybe like, you know, maybe it turns into like a Vietnam type situation. You know, where there's like uh, guerrilla Ukrainian guerrilla <coughs> warfare fighters who are just kind of going off and. They're doing all these little well, uh, bombings and, uh, you know, they're hiding and maybe they turn into like uh, freedom fighters and they're like bombing public places and stuff. I that agree. would suck if they went against like their own like well, citizens. Like, uh, even though uh, I, I'm a 100 percent American fan, a USA fan, I would never support any other country. I'd die for this nation. USA but number one. I, I want you to know. Prison populations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. And, we have our problems just like anybody else. But uh, I was going to say that the Russian decision right now is very similar to the USA uh, decision to go into Vietnam in the first place. Because the USA was scared that there would be this domino effect. If Vietnam fell to the communists, then another country would fall to the communists. And another, and another, and another, and it would be this domino effect. And so that's what the justification was for the USA to I feel like they had to. But look, look, yeah. At, yeah, look at what's happening but now. But it's not on the border. That's a whole different thing. When exactly. It's, it's even worse country. for the Russians right now. Like, uh, you got this uh, territory that used to belong to you under the Soviet Union. They're on your they're on your border and they've become super western friendly they're not about to like join the un or nato right i i, uh, I have they were trying to for the longest time but, it's but kinda, yeah so it's kind of like the taiwan situation it seemed like where they're just we're gonna keep it in the gray kind of zone for a long period of time yeah so but they, they voted for it the ukrainian people voted for it in exactly. their constitution that to join nato and I don't know, they, there's like, it's been kind of talked up and uh, people trying to fast track it. I think George Bush said they're going to try to fast track Ukraine and NATO it's around that time. And um, also, for those who don't yeah. know, uh, I, I looked this up recently before this podcast. In 1991, when the Soviet Union fell, the, uh, Ukraine wanted to become a separate country and they voted for it. And they did this uh, according to their own free will. And they did not want to be a part of uh, this Soviet Union anymore. And uh, so, I mean, I don't understand why Russia wouldn't expect their their wishes for that. But, uh, you know, it's a tricky situation. Also, uh, the U.S. told Russia that um, at the time that NATO would not expand east, <coughs> yet uh, we didn't keep our word on that. And uh, we did expand uh, east from where? Countries from uh, the Berlin Wall. Mm. Or, uh, that was uh, separating East and West Germany. And basically, we were saying that we weren't going to go any ah. closer to Russia. But, you know, 30 years later, and uh, we're like, you know, Ukraine is the only country not in it at this point <coughs> that borders Russia. All the other wow. countries are are, uh, are in, like, yeah, we've moved in Belarus. several countries deeper East. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, and, uh, that's scary yeah. for the Russians. Imagine... Imagine if yeah. that was happening to the USA, like so. Right. Yeah. This would be like if like Canada and like and Mexico, Mexico <laughs> like said we're gonna join China. You know. That's that's scary, man. Like, but the God, thing why is, how do you think we would react to that? I mean, I think there should be a world peace summit where uh, we could recognize each other's differences and differences, uh, different approaches and stuff, but at the same time, pledge to help each other in times of need. And, you know, maybe that's a little uh, too utopian and unrealistic for this <laughs> world, unless yeah, all the world leaders think... get together and take mushrooms together for like a week. <laughs> and then uh... <laughs> once, once the resources aren't limited, you know, once like there's no no one wants for anything, all the basic needs can be easily yeah. met. And the Elon, starving. that's our guy. Yeah, yeah. Elon <laughs> he's, can he's make it, it happen with the robots. Then yeah. maybe I think that's 
that's the only way you get a post war society yeah where scarcity as as is no longer a problem it's always going to cause conflict when there's scarcity yeah, yeah. so we're, we're on the path towards that uh world peace i would say like as long as we don't yeah. kill each other uh before don't the technology arrives first. yep <laughs> So. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but uh, I thought of this earlier. I, <coughs> I told you, but uh, there's some similarities to how Russian people are feeling, and uh, the German people felt post. Yeah, yeah, uh, World you, War yeah, you were saying that, yeah, right. Remember, because uh, before they we started recording. lost World War One, and uh, they their economy suffered afterwards after the and, Treaty of Versailles, uh, and people felt dejected, and um, they. Um, it kind of uh, caused this fervor and it caused them to be willing to turn to someone like Hitler and yeah, um, an suddenly build up their military and um, yeah, and go to the very extreme and, uh, <coughs> and do these horrible atrocities and wage all out war. Yeah. And uh, Russian people kind of uh, their economy has not been great for a long time. Um, there used to be a superpower, and they've just been slowly fading away into obscurity. Uh, they feel like they're being taken advantage <clears> of <throat> by other countries with better economies now. You know, these it's true. NATO has been marching east, and um, yeah, they're so getting, they feel like they're back in the into a corner. Yeah, on the support side of the people, um, they might uh, have some agreement with uh, Putin on that. So uh, um, I did uh, saw I did see an analyst on TV who was just saying that uh, there's a huge chunk of Russia that hates these actions right now. And uh, but before I forget, right. uh, uh, a silent majority. Uh, uh, right, I, that's kind of the extremes I guess. I of your I'm not country. Sure. I, that I'm not an expert on them, but really, no, it's just a general term. Oh, like, I know what you uh, mean. Yeah. Like uh, even in any country, you have a, a lot of people are kind of not politically active and they don't like exactly. a lot of things that are going on, but <clears throat> they're not super involved and um, yeah. they kind of just stay, stay quiet. And then you have the extremes make the most noise, even though they're the smallest percentage of people. Dan Carlin. They make the most noise, they are the most involved, and they drive the, the politics. Yeah, uh, I mean, Dan but Carlin. in reality, it's just money that drives our politics. I mean, money that's right kind of like a smoke show. It's just like, it's just money and donations <laughs> and, you know, corporations. Yep. It's really deciding stuff. But uh, Dan Carlin uh, talks about how uh, there's so many millions of people who've been killed who were just caught in the gears of history as these politicians and these leaders are making all these horrible decisions. <laughs> people... <laughs> <laughs> crushed by the gears yeah basically like uh, people are just trying to live their lives and with their families imagine your own family what happens if you lived in uh russia at the time when the nazis invaded it was the worst place to ever exist uh but here let me uh say this real quick about uh we we're talking about the nazis and uh historical context uh in uh after the treaty of versailles uh after world war one the uh, Germans were uh, had all these war reparations that were like it was an incredible amount of money that they owed to the other countries that it, because they were at fault. We for probably the war. asked for too much. They probably did. That was that's the reason idea. why. And there was yeah. there were people uh, who too were greedy. saying that's too much, and it was yeah. not a, a situation of balance. But not what I was going to say though, we they were not allowed so. to have a standing army uh, to a certain size and. So they were basically like neutered. The German people were neutered. Yeah. So the way they got I mean, around Japan, this. Uh, look, Japan had the uh, same thing with the military, but it kind of worked out the other way. It worked out well with Japan. <clears throat> yeah, but what I was going to say, though, the way Germany got around this, uh, they got a standing army and they were practicing in Russia. The Russians were their allies who were actually helping Fucking the Russians. Germans. No, but oh, yeah, they, they were, were helping buddy, the buddy Germans. At the beginning of the but, war. It, uh, this if was they would have stuck together. After, no, 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 no. I'm saying before the World War II even started. Oh, World I'm War saying I? after World War One, oh. when the Germans oh, yeah. were not allowed to have their own military, uh, you know, exercises going on in their own country, they went over right. to Russia, and Russia was helping them. And what's fascinating as hell Loophole. is that the Russians they actually learned from the Mongol tactics because they were exposed to the Mongol Empire and Genghis Khan or Genghis Khan is a more accurate. Chinggis Khan is the most he accurate. He was uh, way. pretty good at killing that guy. Well, yeah, but they had these horseback uh, tactics and stuff, and so 
the uh, Mongols, uh, the, the Russians learn Not, these tactics. Horses aren't very good against machine guns, though. Well, yeah, I'm getting there. Let me finish the story. <laughs> but anyways, the... Uh, la, la, la. <laughs> the uh, all right, so the, the Russians learned the Mongol tactics uh, over the years. And then so when the Germans were over there uh, learning from them, the, the Germans who would soon become the Nazis, they actually learned Mongol tactics and the blitzkrieg of World War II with all these tanks. That is what uh, the the Nazis actually implied. So the Mongols were using, Mon uh, the Nazis were using Mongol uh, tactics as they were storming through France. At that time, France Other was people considered- Other people would argue that it wasn't just the, they, it was the technology that allowed them to do that because the tanks were- yeah, technologically exactly. superior. Yeah, but it's but like, the formations nothing, they yeah. used with the tanks, the the French were still at that okay. time period oh. considered uh, to be Tweak the a little bit. Yeah, they were the French were supposed to be the most powerful military in the world, and the Nazis steamrolled them based on their new uh, tanks, their Blitzkrieg tanks, and the uh, Mongol. Uh, hey, my friend, what the fuck? You don't want a baguette? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> a what? Fuck you, German. A baguette. A baguette. Oh, oh. <laughs> you don't like a baguette? Mm -hmm. I would have smoke. <laughs> oh, I got a bunch of other cool uh, history stuff I wrote down. Like, All right, here, I'll jump into this one real quick. Uh, in the beginning... Oh, no, I'll, I'll get into uh, the harmonica story. Yeah, on the Eastern Front, uh, the Germans were uh, invading the uh, Russians, of course. That was what I just said, the worst, uh, most casualties ever against a, a single army, 27 million at least, against the Russians. And uh, <coughs> so uh, at night, when they were in their trenches and uh, laying low, what would happen is this uh, Russian guy would be singing, and he was a beautiful singer. He was like an opera singer. And so even the Germans were able to hear this opera singer. And uh, so oh, night after night, the Germans started looking forward to hearing this Russian opera singer. And the Germans had a, a harmonica on them. And they realized how much it would uh, benefit the, the musical performance every night, which was helping everybody get through the war. And so this one German guy snuck with the harmonica in no man's land, between the two armies, in the darkness, crawling on the ground, he threw this harmonica into the uh, the trenches of uh, the Russians just so he'll be able to use the uh, harmonica. So there was beautiful uh, moments of humanness, I guess you could say, uh, even during the worst of the you know violence and horrificness. Uh, you could tell that both sides of any war, ne nobody wants to be in this war. And uh, so there's a lot of beautiful moments that happen like that. So... What are you reading? Oh, wow. There's a video on Twitter that you can actually see a bomb falling through the air and landing on an airport. Why don't you uh, put it up on the screen and play the video? You did it last time. You might as well. Yeah, That's an important one. That <clears throat> but, man, there's a lot of... Also, another thing that happened as you're, as you're getting that going... Uh, I'm putting it up right now on mine. When there was a wounded man on the battlefield in World War One, and uh, I, I'm not sure it's so much about World War Two, but uh, when there was a wounded man, each side would often not fire upon the medics and those who were uh, trying to get the uh, wounded man off the field. I'm sure you had some jerks who would break that rule. But they would not fire in hopes of the other guys not firing. Say if one of if they got injured themselves, or if uh, a friend or whoever got injured, they wanted to be able to recover the injured person, give them medicine and stuff. And so there was a lot of sympathy in warfare in that uh, regard as well. So where's this video? All right, guys, we're back now. Uh, that was a. a quick uh, technical uh, issue uh, he's showing us the uh, video of this airport bombing now you see it? yeah you maximize see it? it yeah maximize it there it is watch the screen falling. is 
is at an airport. What do you know about the Russians and their drone technology? Do they have a sophisticated drones like the U.S.? Hmm. Uh, I really don't know. Yeah, I guess that we I, have uh, more I'm pretty sure they would have that because, uh, what was it? Iran even claimed to have hacked one of our drones and landed it over there that one time. So, yeah, we got shelling reports of shelling detonation of the locator if I took place in something. <coughs> Here's another video. Oh, that's the same thing. I mean, th this is scary stuff. Uh, back uh, at, in the early years of the Cold War, after the Bay of Pigs and, uh, invasion, uh, failed attempt from the U.S., uh, what happened was we had our higher uh, higher up They're officials. The they were they were, the uh, they were living in the office. They were living in the office wearing the same suits for a week oh, wow. straight, sleeping on the floor, thinking that the world was about to end at any moment. And that uh, Washington, D.C. would be nuked at any moment. Look at this. So, the seaport is totally burning away here. Is that a video? No. It's an image. Is it tiny for you? It's like it only takes up uh, the center 30% uh, of the... Uh, How about now? It, it, it looks more like a, a, cell, a mobile phone. Is it bigger screen. right now? Did it change? Did it change no, now? It, it's like a mobile phone. Same. It, yeah, it's like a, yeah. a mobile phone screen. Like yeah, if I held cause myself, because I, my, I got it on my second monitor, that I have an up and down monitor, so it's not that. So yeah, it, it looks like if I, I held like my cell Twitter, phone, though. if I held yeah. my cell phone up, that's how it would look. So, what is it? Ukraine president says Putin wants to destroy our state. Did you see all the uh, Ukrainian people, like in all all those videos, like uh, demonstrating in the streets and holding up their flags, saying they're willing to die for their nation? I mean, it's beautiful at the same time as it is uh, tragic because, man, this, these are scary times. This could escalate so quick. China, at any moment, I predict, China could make a move on Taiwan because as resources are tied up in the West and uh, also... That would be a real dick move by them. It would, it, it would make sense. Smart, but... Yeah. Well, that... we're not really committing anything, though. It's like our forces are all free. <laughs> They'd still run into just as much trouble if uh, they did it now versus otherwise, you know. Yeah, time. but fi uh, the financial strain is real. Like uh, they say that the uh, oh, you want to talk about the prices, financial system? Well, the like, the uh, gasoline prices are going to go way up for a, a wide variety yeah. of countries. So uh, good time to own an electric car. Yeah, I I agree. Everybody should just uh, bail on gasoline, but. Yeah, it should. I'm scared of uh, EMP attacks. Uh, EMPs are ugh, that's scary. You shut down the electrical grid, like it, it, on the Eastern Front in World War II, people had to resort to cannibalism. Like, oh, there's an Italian guy talking. I could read this. What's it say? Italia si è confermata un paese completamente inadequato to Russia. What's that say? Italy has confirmed that a town com compl completely? completely inadequate in Russia. Hmm, it's kind of hard. I'm not. I'm not great with written Italian. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like a master. You know. I get it. Anche, even the simple. This says something like even the simple idea, or imagine. I don't know what that word is. Of is going. To uh, be a mediator with the killer a uh, mosca, I think mosca's fly. Restera un errore and a mediator. Actually, if I put this into Google Translate, <laughs> I'll probably do a better idea, but better job than me. I do. The... Does this show up if I go all yeah, the way to this window? Yeah, I see it. I see it. Oh, okay. Wait. Uh, translate. <laughs> I just saw your thing. It said Denzel Washington, Bruce Willis. <laughs> uh, okay, Italy proved to be it. completely in, inadequate. Sometimes we're out on Russia. Even the simple idea now, I guess, is gone of going to mediate with the killer in Moscow. 
will remain an indelible mistake in Mario Draghi's otherwise ex basically criticizing the Italian government and that they didn't do much to uh, to help prevent this. What do you think about Putin in general, though? Like, uh, I've heard a lot of good things about him, even though he's being a complete jag off right now, and I uh, hope he fails tremendously. Uh, but same, yeah. Like, it, it's it's strange because I've heard that he's done a lot of great things for his people, even though he has you know persecuted his enemies and journalists and oh uh they said there was going to be a kill list of ukrainian journalists who need to die as a child riding a bicycle murdered by a russian bomb uh i guess they're walking up on a corpse oh they covered it up oh that body's all blown to hell horrible man they covered it up with like a towel those are just like some bloody legs sticking out there's some uh, I saw that I once that's... when I was a kid. I lived right next to train tracks uh, over there in Edison Park, and uh, I saw the trains were all backed up one morning before school, and they were sitting in our backyard not moving. So I knew something was wrong, and so I walked over to the train station, and I saw the yeah, same thing. Yeah, we've hung out there a couple of times. Yeah, it's right behind, like, really close to your house. Yeah, so I walked, I walked to the main station, though, where people get on in Edison Park, and I saw the body uh, covered in uh, uh, when I was in grade school, I saw the body covered under a tarp like that, and uh, it's not the ki the type of thing you're uh, ever going to forget, that's for sure. Like, it was yeah, a, a I, white tarp. I made the Some, mistake Somebody of, got hit by uh, a train, I mean, I meant to say. Right. I made the mistake of joining a, Reddit, a subreddit called Make My Coffin, and it's all real photos and videos of people dying. Nah, it's messed up. And dead bodies in brutal ways. and uh, I would never join was, that. Yeah, I was like, uh, well, you know, kind of morbid curiosity. <coughs> Someone was like, you know, maybe if you see all the ways people die, you appreciate life a little more. Like Faces of Death. But, Remember uh, the Faces of Death movies from the 90s? They, they came yeah. out. That was, those were terrible, too. In reality, it's probably just not a good thing to really look at that type of stuff. It just gets in your psyche, and uh, it's probably a net yeah, negative. It's, it, yeah. it's pretty much what you would imagine. It's kind of just... Uh, uh, you know, you don't need to see it really. It's just, yeah, people being. I saw someone cut in half by a train, uh, like, had like half of their body in one area and half a body in the other. I guess the train ran yes. over them. And like, for my channel like name, that. the Dead Man Dreams channel, and like stuff that I look at, like, I like to look at stuff that's uncomfortable and, uh, you know, disturbing in ways like death and uh re like in fact i got that pendant on i every time it jiggles on my chest it's a reminder of death and that's what fuels me to push on and, and to continue uh forward and make the most of life and so it's a beneficial thing but uh are you frozen are you still there i think he's having internet problems i think his internet may have gone out Yeah, he's gone. Well, anyways, I'll tell you guys. So, I'll leave this in because it's a cool little uh, rant. I like to talk about the uncomfortable things. I like to stare into the sun in, in a sense. Only when beneficial. Like, I don't want to see like horrific murders and, and that kind of stuff. It's just sickening. But... When it comes to things that can empower your life and my life, well, I'm going to hit that up. That's about it. And uh, let's just pray for peace, guys. I'll give you a little rant on World War One versus World War Two. World War One, after Franz Ferdinand was uh, killed, war blew up everywhere quickly. And it was all because of allegiances between countries, and this country had this country's back, or that country's back, uh, and the same thing on the other side. And uh, in World War II, things ramped up very, very slowly, where, well, even before the traditional start of World War II, the uh, Japanese were already invading uh, China, and... Phew, 
they call it the rape of man king was one of the absolute worst things ever and uh this was happening before the traditional start but then world war ii actually uh, started happening uh, Hitler needed a reason to invade Poland, and the Russians joined him uh, in doing so, but they did a false flag. The Germans did a false flag, and uh, the rape of, not the rape of, the uh, Reichstag building, which is their uh, official main government building, similar to our White House, that was uh, burned down, and then they dressed up some random guy who had mental health issues in like a, a Polish uh, outfit or a uniform and they blamed the Polish they said the bolt the Polish uh, burned down our building and we need to invade that gained public support and that's what enabled Hitler to invade Poland and start that horrific uh, train you know happening after that so train of events or whatever you want to call it but all right I'm gonna stop this video right now hopefully he's gonna get his uh, connection back and everything will be all right.